Greetings. Today you'll learn about the history of systems of care, wraparound, and the peer support movement. My name is Allison, and I want to tell you all about how exciting it is to be at this point in the history of children's mental health. In my lifetime, a lot has happened that has laid the foundation for the work we are about to embark upon. Isaac Newton once said, If I have seen further than others, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Today, we are standing on the shoulders of others and their hard work that has built children's mental health into what we see today. Let's look at what has come before so we can clearly see the possibilities ahead. Before I was born, when my grandparents were just starting their families, the first examples of peer-to-peer -peer work were just getting underway. What is peer-to-peer -peer work? I think it can be summed up by this scenario. Picture this. A man falls into a hole so deep he can't get out. A doctor walks by and the man calls for help. The doctor writes a prescription, tosses it into the hole, and walks on. A priest walks by and the man tries again. The priest writes a prayer, tosses it into the hole, and walks on. Finally, a friend walks by and again the man asks for help. To his surprise, the friend jumps in with him. Why did you do that, the man asks. Now we're both in the hole. Yes, the friend responds, but I've been in this hole before, and I know the way out. Peers are amazing resources, and their role has changed over time. Let's start back in the Roaring Twenties. My grandparents were just little toddlers when Harry Stack Sullivan became the first psychiatrist to value peer support for the treatment of mental health disorders in 1920. He ran an inpatient facility in Baltimore, Maryland, and actively recruited young men recovering from their own mental disorders to work as aides on the unit. Fast forward to 1935. My grandparents were falling in love, and Alcoholics Anonymous was just getting its start. The work of this group introduced a new philosophy. Peers can help each other improve their own conditions without relying on the experts. Prior to this development, the medical community dominated mental health. In the 1960s, as my parents were in high school listening to the Beatles, the peer movement was taking on an advocacy role during the civil rights era. Former patients protested conditions in mental hospitals. Judy Chamberlain, who had been involuntarily confined to a mental hospital in the 1960s, wrote a groundbreaking book entitled, On Our Own, Patient-Controlled Alternatives to the Mental Health Systems, which was later published in 1978. In the early 1970s, a few years before I was born, when my parents were just starting our family, the federal government created the Community Support Program, or CSP, within the National Institute of Mental Health, or NIMH. This program focused on engaging people who had experienced mental health services in policymaking and program development. During this time, the term consumer was coined for those seeking mental health services. In 1975, one year before I was born, the first form of wraparound was put into action in Chicago. The program was called Kaleidoscope Chicago and was led by Carl Dennis. Kaleidoscope Chicago began implementing private agency-based individualized services for youth and families using a wraparound philosophy. Wraparound puts the family and youth in the driver's seat using an intensive, holistic method of engaging youth with complex needs so that they can live in their homes and communities and realize their hopes and dreams. This same year, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, or IDEA, was passed ensuring all children with disabilities have access to free and appropriate education in the least restrictive environment. As I turned three years old in 1979 and was obsessed with Mr. Rogers, North Carolina began implementing community-based services as a way to avoid the need for long-term inpatient care. This movement was part of the well-known Willie M. Lawsuit Settlement. This was the beginning of more than 30 major U.S. state-level lawsuits that focused on the lack of creative alternatives for mental health treatment and the use of overly restrictive residential and institutional placements. It became obvious that children were not receiving what they needed. But these lawsuits sparked the creation of wraparound services in several states, and that need was met in a new, inventive way. Within this work, Dr. Lenore Behar of North Carolina coined the term wraparound in 1980. 
This term was used as shorthand for services that are flexible, comprehensive, and aim to keep children and youth in their community. When I was just starting kindergarten in 1980, everything really started taking off. The philosophies of wraparound and systems of care were growing in tandem with state and federal initiatives and funding. As MTV took hold of a generation and I was trying to moonwalk like Michael Jackson, Jane Nitzer published Unclaimed Children, The Failure of Public Responsibility to Children and Adolescents in Need of Mental Health Services in 1982, which contributed greatly to the rise and growth of the family and youth movements. In 1984, as I sat in a packed theater watching Ghostbusters and Cindy Lauper sang Girls Just Wanna Have Fun, Congress funded the Child and Adolescent Service Systems Program, or CASP, which provided the first federal funds for systems of care to state mental health authorities. In 1985, as I entered third grade while singing, We Are the World, and my older sister tried to look like Madonna, the Alaska Youth Initiative was formed by state social services, mental health, and education departments. This was a groundbreaking initiative for wraparound. John Vandenberg, a champion of wraparound, took the lead in this initiative. The Alaska efforts were quickly followed by replication attempts in Washington, Vermont, and more than 30 other states. In 1986, as the Oprah Winfrey Show first appeared on our TV screens, the Systems of Care concept was published in an article by Beth Struhl and Robert Friedman. Within the Systems of Care philosophy, Family-driven and youth-guided services and supports are organized into a coordinated network which builds meaningful partnerships, addresses cultural and linguistic needs, and strives to help children and youth and families function better at home, in school, in the community, and throughout life. From 1986 through 1989, the family peer movement grew rapidly. In 1986 through 87, five Families as Allies conferences were hosted at Portland State University. Throughout 1988 and 89, as I crossed over from a preteen to a full-fledged teenager watching the first episode of The Simpsons, the first federal funding for family-run organizations was awarded to eight states, including New York. The Federation of Families for Children's Mental Health was created during this time as well. In New York State, Federal and state government provided grant funds to the Mental Health Association in New York State, or Mahaney's, to hire a parent advocate to help connect parents to each other. Five parent advisors were hired in the five OMH regions of the state. A lot began to change in the 1990s. I learned to skateboard and got my nose pierced, to my mother's dismay. And as I was trying to figure out who I was, so was systems of care philosophy the peer movements, and wraparound. In the early 1990s, the New York State Office of Mental Health developed a multi-tier plan based on the CASP federal initiative from 1983 called the Coordinated Children's Services Initiative, or CCSI. CCSI recognized the need to work across systems. New York State Office of Mental Health convened other state agencies to accomplish this collaboration. In 1992, I was entering 11th grade, listening to Nirvana and dressed in the latest grunge flannel. Bill Clinton won the election for president, and the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, or SAMHSA, was authorized by Congress to improve the quality and availability of substance abuse prevention, addiction treatment, and mental health services. SAMHSA is the driving force behind the federal funding received for extending systems of care, peer, and wraparound work. As I was looking toward my senior year in high school in 1993, the World Wide Web was invented, and Got Milk was the slogan of the year. SAMHSA continued to award grants to communities who proposed using the wraparound process to mobilize systems of care. This same year, six parents worked within the Parent Support Network to inform, educate, support, advocate with and organize families in New York State. And the Parent Support Network won a three-year grant from the National Center for Mental Health Services in Washington, D.C. to develop a statewide parent-run, not-for-profit organization. Within the youth peer movement, these first years of the 1990s were a very active period. The youth voice was being amplified within groups around the state. 
Westchester County Family Ties Youth Support developed What Helps, What Harms, What Could Have Helped in 1992. And the Youth Empowerment Association was created in 1993. As youth voice was being heard, the Office of Mental Health was awarded the first SAMHSA grant received in New York State to implement the systems of care practice. This money went directly to the South Bronx community of Mott Haven. After graduating from high school, I took a year off to hit the road and see what I could of this country. As Toy Story hit the big screen and I entered college to become a teacher in 1995, Families Together in New York State became the official statewide voice for families of children with mental health needs by becoming the New York State chapter of the National Federation of Families for Children's Mental Health. This period also saw the growth of family peer support programs in every region of the state. In 1998, I was in my junior year of college, and as Rose and Jack fell in love on the Titanic, a gathering at Duke University was taking place that involved family advocates, wraparound trainers, mental health providers, and researchers. At this gathering, the 10 principles of wraparound were created as the foundation of the wraparound approach. In 1999, I graduated from college and began looking for work while The Matrix was blowing people's minds in theaters and SpongeBob SquarePants became a phenomenon. This year also marked the first of its kind report on mental health from the Office of the Surgeon General. In this report, the Surgeon General noted that, quote, consumer organizations have had measurable impact of mental health services, legislation, and research. One of their greatest contributions has been the organization and proliferation of self-help groups and their impact on the lives of thousands of consumers of mental health services. In 2001, as the first iPod was released, and I brought my extremely excited niece to see the first Harry Potter movie, the federal Olmstead decision was enacted, which fueled the further growth of systems of care and wraparound. The federal Olmstead decision supported a child's right to community-based services instead of unnecessary institutionalization due to lack of community-based services. This decision mandated that states submit plans on how they would be compliant. Many states use the wraparound process as a cornerstone of their compliance. Additionally, youth groups from all over New York State began to further amplify the youth voice and youth-provided support services. Some of these groups included Free Radicals, My Path, Club Teen Scene, Hillside Youth Advisory Council, and the Families First Youth Advisory Council. SAMHSA began including youth involvement as a priority within systems of care requirements, and young people were invited in the nation's Surgeon General Report on Mental Health, which included youth from New York State. In 2002, as American Idol and the Lord of the Rings mesmerized the nation, Governor Pataki signed the Coordinated Children's Service Initiative, or CCSI, into law. This statute defined the core set of principles and structures to help localities implement integrated child-serving systems consistently across counties. Much of the state's cross-system coordination began with the CCSI statute. Involvement of families and youth exist at the highest levels of these structures. The CCSI philosophy includes serving individual needs of the child or youth and family in the community, reducing out-of-home placements, developing parent and professional partnerships, focusing on strengths, delivering culturally competent services, and providing unconditional care. Today, CCSI membership consists of 56 counties and eight state agencies. The Office of Mental Health, Department of Health, Office of Alcoholism and Substance Abuse Services, Office for People with Developmental Disabilities, Office of Children and Family Services, Council on Children and Families, Department of Education, Division of Probation and Correctional Alternatives. And family representatives are equal participants with these agencies at both the state and local levels. In 2003, as iTunes was launched, the National Wraparound Initiative, or NWI, was formed. For over 30 years, wraparound seemed to be everywhere. Although wraparound was being used in many groundbreaking ways, there lacked consensus about what was essential to the wraparound process and empirical evidence was not being gathered. So, in 2003, in true wraparound fashion, 
a team approach emerged to address these difficulties, and the National Wraparound Initiative formed to create clear definitions of wraparound, specific strategies to achieve high-quality wraparound at the family, team, provider, and systems levels, minimum standards for wraparound practice, implementation, fidelity, and evaluation tools, and handbooks for youth, caregivers, practitioners, and team members on the wraparound process. The National Wraparound Initiative now has become a collaboration among three research institutions. Portland State University serves as host of NWI and contributes to research and policy implementation. The Institute for Innovation and Implementation at the University of Maryland School of Social Work in Baltimore is the hub of training and workforce support for the National Wraparound Implementation Center, or NWIC. And the University of Washington School of Medicine serves as the accountability wing of NWI. Additionally, in 2003, the President's new Freedom Commission on Mental Health included the importance of, quote, family-driven care, which resulted from a comprehensive study of the U.S. mental health service delivery systems that attempted to eliminate inequality for Americans with mental health needs. The mid to late 2000s were a time of exponential growth for the youth peer movement. As my nephew taught me the skills I needed to master the Xbox 360, the first statewide youth coordinator of Families Together in New York State was hired. Additionally, the Families Together in New York State Conference had its first peer-led youth presentation, and the first youth speak-out was held, allowing state agencies to hear the concerns of young people. This was made possible by funding through the New York State Office of Mental Health. As my niece introduced me to Pokemon in 2006, Youth Move National was formed. This same year, SAMHSA released a consensus statement on mental health recovery intended to help states implement the recovery concept. SAMHSA identified peer support as one of the 10 fundamental components of recovery. The next year in 2007, as my niece finally helped me learn how to use Facebook and the first iPhone was released, youth power became a major force in amplifying the youth voice in New York State under the banner historically held by disability rights groups and the family peer movement, which states, nothing about us without us. Additionally, in 2007, my niece found her love of cosplay and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, or DHHS, and the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, issued guidance to states on how to apply for reimbursement for peer support services under Medicaid. In 2011, as the last Harry Potter movie was released and Viola Davis won an Academy Award for her role in The Help, the Medicaid redesign team was established by New York Governor Andrew Cuomo with the goal of addressing core complex issues such as the triple aim of better care, better health populations, and lower costs. Within this redesign team, a vision was created for transforming delivery of health care for children. The Medicaid redesign team's vision is to keep children on their developmental track, focus on recovery and building resilience, identify needs early and intervene, maintain a child at home with support and services, maintain the child in the community in the least restrictive settings, prevent escalation and longer-term need for higher-end services, maintain accountability for outcomes and quality, and maintain and expand access to services for children without Medicaid. In 2013, as many Americans began the new practice of binge-watching their favorite television series, a joint bulletin from CMS and SAMHSA was released, highlighting the effectiveness of home and community-based services. They identified parent peer support as a key service that can enable children with complex needs to live at home and participate fully in their family and community, thus opening the door for Medicaid billing for parent peer support. As all New Yorkers know, the Empire State tends to lead the nation, and within systems of care, it is no different. Since 1999, New York State has received multiple systems of care grants through SAMHSA. Westchester County from 1999 to 2005, New York City in 2002, Albany and Erie counties in 2004, Monroe County in 2005, Chautauqua, Onondaga, Orange, and Nassau counties in 2008, 
New York State's success began to focus on statewide systems of care expansion in 2012. When systems of care expansion grants began to be awarded, Monroe received funds in 2012, upstate New York in 2013, and Chautauqua, Onondaga, Cayuga, and Rockland in 2016. Also in 2016, the New York State Office of Mental Health took the lead on behalf of a collaboration with several state agencies and partners and was awarded a Systems of Care Expansion Grant. Do you know which process OMH is using? Wraparound. Working with the Medicaid team, New York State is laying the groundwork to ensure families with the most complicated health care needs have access to wraparound. Standing on the shoulders of giants, we shift and innovate to improve care for children and families across New York. And so, in 2017, as wraparound has become an evidence-based practice, you get to continue this story in the making. Together, we will make a difference in the lives of children, youth, and families in New York State. Today, you become part of this glorious history. On behalf of everyone here at the New York State Office of Mental Health, welcome.